Kurt Franklin went on a rant, and I want you guys to react. Let me know what you I think. I think that we got to reconsider this goal of making everything so pretty and wrapped in this pretty bow. Every time somebody is a Christian, they want to try to talk in ways well, you know, God did this. It's like this perfection of always wanting to have the answer and the scripture and the biblical reference for every little detail in life. It's really beginning to piss me off. It's really beginning to be very frustrating <laughs> wow. because it's like we want to quote and represent the things of faith that are comfortable for us. But again, when you're talking about a book that's full of liars, adulterers, whoremongers, murderers, thieves, like nobody in the Bible was pretty. Nobody in the Bible had this clean, pretty life. But in real time, y'all keep wanting to make everything so pretty and so packaged well that it's like, if your way was working, Christianity in America would be growing. There would be an increase. But it's like you see the numbers. You see the numbers of people that don't believe. You see the numbers of people that are leaving, but y'all still want to keep holding on to <clears throat> the fact that y'all are y'all are y'all are like experts in the in the text and the Aramaic and the Greek and the Hebrew instead of realizing that Everything in Christianity is not going to be wrapped in a perfect bowl. Life is not fair. And life is not easy. It was not easy in the text. It ain't easy now. I'm in Orlando. It's my, I'm, I'm not in Florida. And these people have been hit with all of these storms. Folk going through a lot of bull with the government. Insurance companies are leaving them without the houses getting fixed. And y'all still want to throw scriptures at people. Well, here's a scripture that I want to throw at you. The Bible says rejoice with those that rejoice and mourn with those that mourn. Y'all are so pretty wanting to wrap everything in a perfect bowl that you don't even give yourself a chance to feel the pain that people go through. Mm. Y'all want stuff, you, you want to throw scriptures and stuff so quickly that you just don't even give people the opportunity to mourn, to hurt. <laughs> hurt with people. Why don't y'all want to hurt with people? Why don't y'all want to feel the agony of what our species goes through as humans? Folk are going through, bro. And y'all want to be so quick to just keep throwing all of these bibliocentric ideals at people instead of going, man, I can't even imagine how that mama feels having to bury her third child. Bro, y'all got to y'all y'all got to help me. Y'all got to help me. Stop trying to make Christianity so perfect and pretty and let it be ugly when it's time to be ugly. Job's life was ugly. Joe's life was ugly. Paul's life in prison was ugly. <laughs> David's baby dying after his adulterous relationship with Bathsheba, that was Bathsheba, that was ugly. It's ugly. It's ugly. The storms of life are ugly. And life ain't fair. <laughs> and God does not always make sense. That's the truth. But y'all want to throw y'all want to throw scriptures at that. Yeah, but you man, let let it breathe. Let it breathe. Don't be so quick to throw script. Let it breathe. Yes, life is unfair, and God does not always make sense. Period. Period. Let life hurt when it needs to hurt. That don't make your faith less. That don't make Christianity weak. It makes it real. All right, what do y'all think about what Kirk said? <laughs> first off, bro, <laughs> I know you normally go first, but first off, man, like, 
how do you get it was like it was almost like a storm like you know how a storm would go in one place or a tornado a tornado would go in one place and all of a sudden it shifts over there at first i'm thinking like who is down to playing what happened to people in the earth like he, in must, earth? he must be seeing it you know what i mean he no. must be seeing something <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't you don't think so? No. No. Okay. No, I'm not, I'm not saying. Wait, I'm, no, no, no. I'm not saying <clears throat> there's been people who the government, like he said, the government did something to people or people playing politics, doing that. And that's whack. I understand that. But it sounds like, I'm going I'm to be frank. It sounds like I'm doing this music thing. Y'all critiquing me for doing this yeah. thing with Glorilla, mm. T.I., and all these people. Y'all need to shut up. God is working. Y'all not seeing the. Y'all don't know the fruit. Y'all don't know. Y'all quick to throw scriptures at it. Y'all don't know. Y'all jumping out. Y'all need to stop because God is working. That's what he. That's what it sounds like. But then he started mixing in some other stuff to make it be like. Because in my mind, I'm like, who? Who would like? What Christian would throw scriptures at a natural disaster? Like you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So he's talking about the people that are coming at him, and it for me that's scripture a bus. Like, we live by the scripture. Yeah. So if you're talking about, you know, hey, don't throw scripture at me. Well, people are correcting you through scripture. That's what it is. I don't think I, I don't think that's what he was talking about. I think, remember, this was a few weeks ago. So this was after Hurricane Milton. It, you know, it. If you if you didn't grow up in Florida, you don't know how devastating those hurricanes can be. My brother was down there during the hurricane, yeah. right? And it was, it was right after that. And I think what he's talking about is... Um, when people say, you know, uh, you know, somebody just lost their life and there's like, you know, they'll send a scripture that'll say, you know, uh, God will, you know, heal your wounds. And, you know, like they'll, they'll pull a scripture to answer their pain mm -hmm. instead of just being like, nah, man, that, you're right. That was terrible. But Sean, you know I don't I mean? think he did this live about, right after. I, the I actually do. No, uh, he did this live right after. The he might he might be mixing that in. That might be why he's upset. But I'm just addressing what he's I, I, actually saying. No, I think what he's saying is Christians are focused on the wrong thing. He was like, y'all are worried I about what I'm that. saying and what I'm that. doing. I think, think y'all are inferring that. But I think what he's actually saying, it, I mean, you can infer into what he said. But what he actually is saying, I think, is a real thing where Christians will um throw stuff like just pat answers at people that are actually in pain so if you don't think he's actually saying what he's saying then i get what you're saying yeah but yeah i'm yeah. just responding to what he actually says and i think oh, okay that can be a problem. Yeah, I, I, I agree but this is a diversion yeah i think it's a mixture of both i think that's what they're inferring is what he actually wants to say but he's using that to cover you think it up so? okay. yeah i think what he's saying i I look at what he's saying. It's a lot of things that he said that I didn't agree with. But I think, for one, Scripture has an answer for everything. Mm -hmm. Two, do I think it's time to Bible thump somebody every time? No, I don't. So I think, as believers, we can take time to show compassion. I don't think during our compassion do we do anything to go against Scripture. Um, I also feel like in the midst of that compassion, that doesn't mean we don't hold you accountable for things you're doing outside the, word, the, uh, the will of God. Mm -hmm. So with Kurt... He doing just dancing, doing these things. He anointing <laughs> Usher on stage and all that kind of stuff. Like people who are believers who follow your music and you had a certain certain uh, standard that you were holding your music to for a while. They see you go take this sharp left turn. Now you're doing all these things. They're going to have questions. Um, if you're in a platform, you should go ahead and accept that. They're going to ask you questions. But do I think Christians sometimes do the most? Like, man, like mourn with these people who mourn. And like, I see it online. Sometimes, sometimes like it might be an issue where a black man get killed by the police or something crazy happened and people just want to come with a scripture. It's like, man, this mother has to bury her son. Mm -hmm. Give it a break. This might not be the time to say that right now. Like, just because you know something don't mean it's time to say something at all times. That don't mean we go against the text. That don't mean we don't go against, we go against right. the scripture. But have some understanding, have some compassion for a human being that just lost their life. They yeah, just lost everything. That's what I'm saying. It's like, I do see that where mm -hmm. people take it as, oh, here's my at bat to, to do a home run for Jesus. In the midst of somebody losing their kid, like, this is my chance to show how Christian I am. You, uh, you know, First Corinthians. So, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that, no, I think that... I, I know y'all are reading into it because of what happened around this event, but mm -hmm. I'm just responding to what he said in this. I do think that can be a problem where Christians, they, they, they almost, it's like you're competing for like, you know, 
I, I want to take the shot. I want to take the shot yeah. where you get bonus points in heaven for saying the right thing at the right time. You don't see that as what I, what I disagree with what he was saying was like the main thing I was saying like, do we or do we not believe that scripture has an answer for every situation? Mm -hmm. So it's the timing and the approach and the yeah. delivery of it. But yeah. scripture itself does have an answer for every situation. Nothing new is under the sun. So mm -hmm. I believe things that happen. I just believe people are picking the wrong spots. And like what you're saying, I want to be the one. My prayer was the one that got them through. My word was the one that was so anointed that made them feel like everything was going to be all right. We do have people doing that. But what he talked about right here, what I'm looking at, like what they were saying, I kind of feel like he's feeling the heat of people criticizing everything mm -hmm. he does. Yeah. And he's intertwining mm -hmm. that with what's going on with these people because he went from not only natural disasters, he's saying, <laughs> he's saying people burying their children. He's talking about all kind of different scenarios that people are going through. David, baby, dying from bad sheep. What they got to do with Orlando and the hurricane? You yeah. see what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah, you, so he, he may be trying to justify his actions mm -hmm. now by saying he's dealing with real life people in person. And y'all... Twitter thugs, Bible Bible bullies don't see what I see on a daily basis. Absolutely. And it, I think you're right. He may be justifying what he's doing mm -hmm. now. I'm just responding to what he just said. So mm -hmm. there, there's this guy uh, at my job. He came to me. He's a, he's an atheist. And he said, uh, do this on your show. Ask this on your show. When a hurricane is coming, why are Christians praying for the people that are about to get hit by the hurricane? Didn't God make the hurricane? And aren't you praying against his will if the hurricane's coming? I was like, okay. Uh, so there's a fallen world and this. <laughs> I, I try to explain all this stuff, but honestly, it's like, okay, how do you answer that? Like cleanly, quickly. What's your answer? Well, you said, are you, are you praying against God? Yeah. 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 Well, I, I would say, first of all, that, you know, the Bible does say that we're promised trouble in this world. And then there's, so we have an enemy roaring like a raging lion looking for whom to devour. So some stuff can be spiritually based. We do have spiritual warfare. And, what is it like witch doctor people who make it rain and do all kind of stuff. Uh, we have spiritual warfare. We have all pain itself and we have God pruning. So it's like things happen. We're promised this, but we also have a savior that helps us. But I also think too, which is a good topic as far as the thing that separates the whole manifestation and prayer is the fact that we're praying the will of God. Mm -hmm. You know, like even going back to the the story with Jesus' first miracle with like um, him turning the water into wine, like the beauty of Mary being able to understand that like Jesus can do something. Like I can go to him like a child and touch his heart and ask him like, Lord, like if this, if you are doing this, but as a child of God, I do have the, I can come to you and be like, Lord, you know, can you move this hurricane if it's your will and that's yeah. what's going to happen that's what's going to happen but as a child of God I can still pray and ask I, I think you look at so you look at uh, Christ they said when well, he was like chump off the Pharisees and all this kind of stuff he wasn't happy about telling some people that like y'all can't hear the word y'all can go they said he might have had tears in his eyes to this point yeah. so I just think when God does what he does with the hurricane is no reason ever should I not love and care about the next man and what's going to happen to them. If God said, I'm going to send this hurricane to Florida, I'm still going to pray for the people in the hurricane for the best possible outcome because yeah. I don't know what God is doing. My thoughts are not his thoughts. My ways are not his ways. But the alternative is I see a hurricane wipe your home out and I just say, oh, well, God is doing his thing. That seems pretty inconsiderate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, I think I should still care about you and be concerned about you and mm -hmm. be in position to try to help if I can. Because sometimes God may allow certain things to happen to see what your reaction is going to be. Yeah. To see how you're going to respond. Well, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and yeah, that's, that's good. Here's his dilemma. He said, okay, so the hurricane comes. And this, this happened to me, right? And Hurricane Andrew came through. It missed our house and it went up down to Hialeah. Mm -hmm. Destroyed Hialeah. Now, a Christian, and this is him telling me, Christian's reaction to that is, well, thank God. Thank God. He protected me. But he's like, well, then how does that make sense? Because you're also saying, well, he didn't protect them. Mm -hmm. So his confusion is, why are Christians, why do we thank God for things just because it didn't happen to us mm -hmm. when the person right next to us is right. dead? It's different. Could you, could you inconsider it? If you want to be real about it. Mm -hmm. Because if I love my neighbor as myself. If I see them grieving, I see them hurt, and I see them lose everything, I shouldn't be over here celebrating because I didn't lose anything. I should be looking, biblically speaking, I should be looking to see how can I be a be an aid to that person who's in need. But we're such a me, 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 me society, we're including in church, that if it doesn't happen to me, oh, man. It's, but when it hits your home, now the whole world has to stop. The pastor has to call and come by and bring the fried chicken. You know what I'm saying? When it's your child that gets hurt. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're inconsiderate. Yeah, we're inconsiderate and we're selfish. We think about me. As long as I'm good, I'm good. 
Mm-hmm. Man, I hate to see that happen to them. I'm going to go on with my life. A school gets shot up. We talk about it for a couple of weeks. Next thing you know, we talking about something else. Yeah. These folks still mourning the kids that got killed in yeah, the school. Because yeah. we're inconsiderate. And we desensitized to the evil that's going on around I, us. I think it's a difference between evil, where evil happened, and then... Because I'm, I'm thinking about... When you asked that question, I thought about... Um, I thought about in Exodus when the the deaf angel came and it was taking people's firstborn and stuff, but people who had the blood of Jesus, well, the lamb over their house was spared. So it's like, how do you justify that? Well, you justify that because those God chose those people and those other people, they were disobedient to the Lord. Not saying these people who lost everything were disobedient, but it just could be something where, like, you know, if you saved and you you praying and you not and then somebody down the sh- down the street may be living whatever type of life they're living, I'm not saying like on no sin level, but they be, they just may be disobeying the Lord. I'm not saying God is wrong for destroying their stuff, but I think at the same time you could be the person at that time when you go and help them out with their stuff. What mm-hmm. you maybe need to do what the Acts Church did and help them with their things and maybe if they got, if you got room in your house help them let them live with you for a time before they you know what I mean be the church for them mm-hmm. but at the same time we can't look at God like why he spared these people and, and not these people is because you know what I mean so <clears throat> I, I can't question him I don't, I don't know why he would yeah. take somebody's firstborn and not somebody else's firstborn so, and so, be covered by the blood yeah so this is why we have these conversations on here because there's real life situations you're going to get in where I'm like why is this person that I know is an atheist asking me about God yeah. Why is he so curious about this, right? So I'm like, okay, game time, right? Mm-hmm. Now I have to, everything I learned, everything, I, like, I, this yeah. is the moment. I got to yeah. make it work, right? So I'm listening, and what I'm listening for is, okay, does this person really not believe in God, or is he angry at Christians? Mm-hmm. And I'm hearing anger at Christians. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, if if your anger at the people, uh, if, if you're angry at the people and it keeps you away from God, do you think that that's a wise thing to do to keep yourself away from God just because his people are acting badly? And he's like, no, maybe not. And then he started sharing with me about he has a sister-in-law who's an evangelist and, and a missionary. And he and he sees value in that, but he just cannot get past this fact that he hates that Christians seem so selfish. Mm-hmm. He feels like we do everything we do for ourselves, even the things we do giving wise is so that we can get recognized he thinks he he hates that and i said well you know what you sound like to me you sound like an old testament prophet you sound like what a a prophet would tell christians that they're living in sin you you think you're doing it for god but you're really doing it for yourself you would make a great prophet and i was like you're letting you're you're letting the people (laughs) keep you away from your calling from god and he was like maybe maybe and and i told him i was like don't let people that you find fault in because we find fault in them too. I told him, watch the show. We always say, hey, this just because this person is Christian doesn't mean they're everything they do is right. We yeah. call out sin, right? That's fine. You're noticing the same things we notice. Yeah. But your but what you have to understand about God, and I told him, I was like, if you if you because he brought up like Richard Dawkins, and he's like, Richard Dawkins says this about God and that about God. And I'm like, here's the thing. The real story about God and God's plan in this world. You're not going to necessarily like it. I, there's nothing I'm going to say that's going to clean all this up for you. But what a real Christian is, is somebody who believes in God and trusts God. Mm-hmm. And if you're willing to hear the story, I'll show you why I believe and I trust. Mm-hmm. But it's not all these little situations are always going to make sense. And, and that's why I don't want to skip what Kirk is saying. I know you guys have problems mm-hmm. with Kirk and we could talk about that <coughs> other time. No but problem. this issue, I think, is a real issue that people have yeah. that we seem to be insensitive during these times. Mm-hmm. How do we fix that because it's keeping people away from God. They see us and they're like, I, I don't want to be like that. But I think the the problem with the majority of us is saying is that you're absolutely right that you have those people doing that at that time. But if somebody is God, I don't want to say this. Um, if somebody is coming off if if I'm saying if Ryan saw me do something whack and I get up and be like Yo, y'all need to stop telling me what I'm doing is whack when, you know, down the street, they just lost everything. They, I, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm out in the street. They losing that. I'm out in, but if I'm doing something whack, you know what I'm saying? Like, at the same time, it's, 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 you're right. Like, people got to be more, more conscious, more thought-provoking. Let the Holy Spirit lead you on when to say something and yeah. when not to say something. That, that's, that's true. You know what I mean? I, I've been caught out so many times where I'm about to post something online and go, Holy Spirit, like, you really want to post that? I'm like, 
Nah, that's you know what I mean? Key. So, I mean, I think that's the thing. But it's like our former pastor, when he went up on stage and say something crazy or he would say something and, and make it look like it's something else, you would be like, yeah. Chris, come on, Chris. Yeah. Chris. So you're you're saying you're saying <laughs> you're discerning that there's he has an ulterior motive for saying this. Absolutely. I'm saying that can be true. Yeah. But what he's saying is not. To no, be that's what I, that's what you I'm saying. I mean? Like no. it's, it's a double edged sword because what you're saying is, yeah, um, these people need they need Jesus. They need the church to be the church. Yeah. They need people to come uh, come beside them and say, hey, we're right here with you. What do you need? We need to be the axe church in these moments when natural disasters hit people. But I'm also, and I think we also saying is, don't act like this is more important than what you're trying, really trying to do, yeah. right? And, and you get caught on your stuff. They need help and compassion. You need accountability. Yeah. Right. Exactly. The hurricane, you can't hurricane that. they need love, compassion, <laughs> help for what they're going through, the real life situation. People who may not be where they want to be in their relationship with God, they need patience. We need kindness, mercy, grace, mm -hmm. the whole nine. But if you're getting up here twerking on stage, we're going to call you out. <laughs> yeah. Rightfully like, so. You, you need to be held accountable. So don't try to intertwine what you're doing in yeah. with what they're doing, bro. You're tripping. Yeah, I, I definitely think to what the point that what he literally said what Sean is getting at yeah. is that I definitely feel like as a body we can grow in that area because I have experienced that like when I had a loved one pass away they hurt themselves and then I had a sister she was she was well-meaning but she's like oh everything happens for a reason and was sending me scriptures and I was like if somebody kills themselves yeah. I don't think that was a part of God's right. plan yeah. you know so we do have to be careful with what we're saying and I think a really good book because I love to give tools about that is emotionally healthy spirituality and they even have a leadership version so if you're in leadership they have emotionally healthy spirituality for leaders or whatever by Peter Scazzaro but he really just shows how it's important to be emotionally mature and intellectual as well because if you're not you have this off balance between physically healthy emotionally healthy and spiritually healthy and a lot of times people are so imbalanced because they're so word heavy that they're not emotionally intelligent so that's how you get those situations where it's like sis if you were a little bit more emotionally intelligent you would not have said that to me Absolutely. so now you just piss me off mm -hmm. yeah. I think, I was, I think, <laughs> um, I think experiences too so I just recently took a trip to Jamaica and, um, you know, when I came back to the States, you know, I'm looking at my character like, man, you're spoiled mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. to see how the people we went to a nice resort. But the the area around the resort, uh, it was poor. And, and I, I was able mm -hmm. to meet some of the people and I see how they live. And it made me appreciate. And, and like I said, it worked on my character as a person like, man, you know, I should better appreciate where I'm at, you know, and, 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 um, looking, seeing that experience in that and seeing that it's like, we talk about it all the time. Like, man, we, we, we got it good over here, but to see that and experience that it, it, it caused me to, um, do, do some study. Like the whole, just like she said, like, listen to the Holy spirit in those moments. It started to, the, the Holy spirit started to convict me and, and, and say, Hey, Look at why this is like this. And so I, I started doing some background and some history on, on Jamaica and why it's so poor. And God just began to pour pour into me with that experience. So, mm. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say this. Definitely listen to Kirk. Like I said, said what he actually said. Um, yeah, I think sometimes Christians, and we all go through this, we're on a journey. And, um, you know, some people just don't know what to say. they like, hey, I'm going to go to my Christian knees and just say, God be with you, and uh, you know He will never leave you. Never, okay. But at the same time, people want to know the heart of God, mm -hmm. not just the word of God. In those times and moments, and sometimes mm -hmm. also, further than that, they want to know the hand of God. Okay, mm -hmm. you should give me a scripture. That's cool. Okay, now should you be saying, well, "Is there anything you need? What can I help you with? What can I do for you?" Mm -hmm. I, I live in North Carolina right now, and so they they got hit by you know Milton mm -hmm. in, in Western North Carolina, and. I have, I'm in the army, so I have battle buddies who live out in certain places. They live in Georgia, got hit in Augusta as well. And, you know, besides me saying, hey, I'm praying for you, I was like, hey, what do you need right now? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm praying for you. That's, that's why I shout out that because we pray without ceasing, but what, what do you need right now? And of course, you know, most people be like, hey, I, I don't need them. I'm kind of working things out. But okay, if you need anything, let me know. Mm. And aside from that, of course, I'm donating or I'm doing whatever I can in my area of influence. But at the same time, I think people miss because sometimes they're caught up in the moment. They don't know. They haven't experienced it. What did Jesus do? Right when he was tempted, 
he went out into the mission field. He went to Galilee. He started to get in with his ministry, but he had to be tested. And sometimes people don't know what you're going through unless they actually been through that same thing with you. Mm. And so people need to know the heart of God and the hand of God, not just the word of the God. Yeah. Amen. And, and I, I want to say this, too, um, before we go to the next topic. We're praying for Kirk. Like, yeah, yeah. I was praying mm -hmm. for him this morning. Like, I'm, I I'm always pray for whatever we talk about. But I think at the same time, it's just one of those things is like, God touch his heart, like realize because we remember that conversation we had about him when he was like, I just can't be forgotten and all of those stuff. It's like, bro, like really, I pray like for him, like because I mean like, one he's a pioneer and a trailblazer, but he's a pioneer because he's he didn't have nobody to say how do I how do I navigate this? Mm -hmm. How do I deal with these? He's the only person, you know what I'm saying? So I think I think at the end of the day is man, um, we can critique him. We can be. You can say what you want to say and all, but if you ain't praying for him, then that's like half the battle too. Because I think at the end of the day, it's like prayer is what gets to God's heart. And when when it gets to God's heart, He can touch Kirk Hart like, yo, you need to slow down, or you need to really, you really need to get, you need to, need to pivot. Yeah, you need to pivot, or you need to do something. You know what I mean? But I just think I think the thing too is like if you if you're so quick to Make a comment. You're so quick to critique him. Be quick to pray for him too. And while you're praying for him, mm -hmm. pray for my friend at work. Yeah. yeah, those are. I mean, these are the people we often forget. You know, when we're praying out for all these celebrities and popular people, uh, he has. He, I I believe that I saw a heart for God when he was talking to me. Mm -hmm. Pray that God reaches his heart and and really truly pulls him through all the the doubts and the disbelief yeah. and all the all the mm -hmm. anger he sees at righteous anger honestly christians behaving badly mm -hmm. yeah. that's keeping him away from him uh pray for him i i, I want to see his heart change um and and that he feels like it wasn't forced on him but it, it's like a true coming out of his own heart 